thousand said goodbye to an American hero today. Captain Melton providing backup to his officers in pursuit of a suspect was shot and killed. The man who served in the National Guard for 26 years, earning a bronze star for his heroism in combat. As KCK residents spoke out about the second cop killed here in the line of duty in just two months. Mr. Speaker, may God bless Captain Melton, his family, and all those who serve our great nation. July 19th, 2016. 1357 hours. Which way to go, Larry? It's right here. The last time I saw him, and I went over and turned around. I oh. went back to the east here. Unless he cut through there, um, through that grass over towards the park. He was south from 21st along with last time I saw him. Going north on two, do the one you saw. That's him up ahead of your 100 over here on the we on 22nd Street. There, I'm gonna be out of two, two and a half school. Copy two, two and a half school. Shots fired, multiple shots fired. Get some help. He's running back. He's running back. East. Get some help up here immediately. He ran back east. Captain's down. It's 100 for needs an ambulance immediately. 10 we copy. They're moving in. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. July 23rd, 2016. When Detective Brad Lancaster was murdered, on May 9, 2016, I reached out to Captain Melton the next morning. I asked him to help us guide us through the mil military-style honors a fallen hero deserves. And he quickly accepted the task with a mighty yes, sir. Just prior to Brad's funeral, I asked Captain Melton to create a how-to manual for a fallen officer's funeral. So we would have a playbook for future leaders of our department to follow in the event there was another tragic loss of an officer after we were all retired. His reply was, I'm already on it, sir. I'm taking meticulous notes and I will have it done shortly after the funeral. He was true to his word and completed the manual about two weeks ago. When he delivered the manual to the chief's office, he said, it's all done, put it on the shelf, and hopefully we'll never have to use it again. It was with a heavy heart It was with a heavy heart that we pulled the manual off the shelf to guide us through the process of honoring its author, Captain Robert Melton.
I'd like to borrow a couple of stanzas from a eulogy that another older brother had to give to his young brother, younger brother. And then I'll explain the origin for those who don't remember it. Like it or not, we live in times of danger and uncertainty. That is the way he lived. That is what he leaves us. My brother need not be idolized or enlarged in death beyond what he was in life. Be he remembered simply as a good and decent man who saw wrong and tried to right it, who saw suffering and tried to heal it, who saw war and tried to stop it. Approximately 50 years ago, those words were spoken by Senator Ted Kennedy at his brother Bobby's funeral. Bobby Kennedy was the Attorney General of the United States, the top police officer in our country. Sadly, those words that were spoken almost 50 years ago are even more true today. Last Wednesday morning, me and Linda went outside around 7.30 to raise the American flag to the position and then lower the flags to half-mast. The light that illuminates the flag in our yard is affixed by, to the pole using radiator hose clamps. I tell you that because David told me one day that he could fix anything with duct tape and radiator hose clamps. He'd come over to our house many a times to fix things that was broke. When he came in, he had his tools, and in that tools was plenty of duct tape and radiator hose clamp. I remember one day, me and little David had to go down to the toolbox, and while we're looking in my toolbox, we found a radiator hose clamp and took it up and gave it to David so he'd have an extra radiator hose clamp. Today, I wish I could find the duct tape and the radiator hose clamp to fix this tragedy. Begin each day from bended knee and ask your own heart, what drives me to wear the badge? As you search your own heart before each shift, if your conscience is clear, if your willingness to venture once more into the fray is founded by righteous service for the citizens you've sworn to serve and protect, if you're prepared to observe unwavering the constitutional principles that your badge represents, then get up, gear up, mount up, roll out. Hit your streets with confidence and courage, intent to deliver respectful, compassionate police protection, dedicated to investigate and arrest with utmost professionalism, always with an eye to the rights of those you serve always with a clear memory of the badges that have come before you, ever conscious of the sacred duty you've sworn to perform with constant prayer upon your lip, that if this day is to be your last, let your actions be courageous, your aim true, your jaw set, your spirit at ease, and your heart without malice. So help you God.
Dispatch calling 100. Dispatch calling 100, Captain Nelson. Captain Robert Dave Nelson, serial number 1799, is 10-7, on Tuesday, July 19th, 2016. We thank you for your dedication, loyalty, and service to the citizens of Kansas City, Kansas, and the United States of America. You have made the people you served your family. You have influenced many with your compassion and respect for others. Last call for Captain Robert Dave Melton, serial number 1799. You will never be forgotten. So why get in this business? If this is how it ends, if this is what it's all about, why sign on? Regardless of whether you're fighting fires, fighting crime, or providing medical care to save lives, you sign on because you know that there are people that depend on you. You sign on because you know that you're making a difference and it would be chaos without you. You sign on for the personal satisfaction that you're able to bring home from the job that only someone that fills your role can understand. You sign on because it's a calling and you truly care about the welfare of others. Don't ever for a second forget why you signed on.